Hey, welcome to Something New for GMBN, a weekly race report. That's right, this time of the week, every week, we're going to be giving you the results and the rundown of what's been happening in the world of mountain biking, in the competitive side of things, all the pros and all you guys out there racing. So let's get into what's been happening in the races this week. Let's start this week's show in southern Spain for the Andalusia bike race presented by Shimano, which came to a close at the end of last week, and this year's edition was probably the toughest so far. The six-day stage race is always a terrific challenge for its 850 competitors, but in 2018 the weather proved to be a game-changer that kept the racers and the event organisers on their toes. For the event organisers it was a case of managing difficult logistics, safety and racing in torrid conditions. Eventually two stages were shortened and only one was cancelled. For the racers it was a real slog through rain and a true battle to take part and even greater challenge to compete. But compete they did on a rain sodden event with stages averaging 70 kilometers each day. The elite women was won by Hildegun Hodvanak on a Scott Spark, who admitted the tough conditions had suited her Norwegian homeland. Hodvanak had started the final stage with a strong lead, so could ride at the front with control, but couldn't resist battling in those final stages, and it led to a great final stage win. German Naima Desner of DMT Racing didn't win any stages, but consistent riding throughout meant podiums all the way through, and that helped her to finish second in the general classification. The early leader of the race had been America's Chloe Woodruff in her debut at a mountain bike stage race, but she had tired over the week and eventually took third overall. In the men's it was Portuguese marathon specialist Tiago Ferreira who was in fine form this week with another dominating performance in Andalusia. He'd built a commanding lead by the final stage and had only to protect it for the win. Fabian Rabensteiner made a great effort of taking the race to Tiago and it resulted in a win on the final stage but it was only enough for third place overall. Enrique Mosillo of Buff Scott MTB rode a fantastic final stage with the knowledge he could move up the GC. His third place was enough to place him second overall behind the imperious Tiago. This was his third Andalusia bike race win. Amazing. Time to head over to Australia for the Australian National Downhill Championships which took place this weekend at Mystic Mountain Bike Park in Victoria. Some exciting racing here on a blown out track that looked pretty wild. Riding the brand new Intense M29 production downhill rig, the current Australian national champion Jack Moyer had everything in place to regain his title. However, a far from perfect seeding run added a lot of pressure. To keep things interesting though, his main rival, Canyon's Troy Brosnan, had an even worse seeding after a front tyre flat that destroyed his effort. That would mean a very early start time for Troy, so the door was wide open for Jack. In the finals, Troy was first man down and he put an amazing run together, two seconds quicker than the fastest time of anybody from seeding. So it was going to take an incredible run to beat it and the entire field would prove unworthy until Jack Moyer came down with a blistering run. It went close to the wire but Jack was nine hundredths of a second back. Jackson Frew followed and also came relatively close, just four seconds back but Troy Brosnan had done it. First man down the hill and now national champ. In the women's race it was really all about Tracy Hanna. Her dominance was obvious in the seeding and the excitement was always going to come from who would nab second out of Tegan Malloy and Sean Hearn. Sean had the upper hand in seeding but Tegan managed to improve drastically in the final to get within 20 seconds of Tracy. Claiming her 10th national title Tracy Hanna clearly ready for a season of World Cup racing. So congratulations to both Troy Brosnan and Tracy Hanna Australian national champion. Champions. Left me with some interesting questions though. For instance, where was Mick Hanna? Fourth place, but in terms of time gap, he was way off and he should be closer to these guys. What about the intense 29er missing out on the win? Dean Lucas had qualified first on that bike in the qualifying seeding run, but a crash in the finals had denied him. Frustratingly close for a debut win for the production M29. Cool racing though over in Australia. 
Time for something a bit different now. In the deserts of Qatar, the Al Adi Desert Challenge, a big highlight and the most challenging cycling event of the Qatar off-road calendar. For the first time in Qatar, the race is also part of the UCI calendar, marked as a sea-free cross-country point-to-point race, covering 40 kilometers of astonishing desert track from sea line to one of Qatar's most impressive natural wonders, the Inland Sea, or the Khul Al Adid. In that C3 UCI category, it was a stunning win for Eric Decker from the Netherlands, finishing in under 1 hour 25 minutes, which is impressive considering the heat and the terrain. He held on to a 30 second advantage to beat Kiwi Roman van Uden and Frenchman Frederick Gombert, who was a further 30 seconds back. In the women's UCI race, it was Pia Sundstadt from Finland dominating the class. She was nearly 20 minutes ahead of second place Sophie Giovanni from France. Other notable results from this desert spectacular. In the fat bike category, it was a win for Qatar local Mubarak Alaji with a strong five minute gap back to Simon Agus from the UK. Glenn Bull and Julie Melville, both from Australia, took the wins in the open category where most of the competitors battled it out. In this class, the top racers were taking two hours plus some were slogging it out there for over four hours. The Al Adid looks like a fantastic challenge to take on in mountain biking. Now back to Spain for the Chelva International Cross Country where Yolanda Neff has made a super fast and unexpectedly early return to racing after breaking her collarbone in a crash with Pauline Provan Prevost at the Cyclocross World Champs only five weeks ago. Great news to see her on top of the podium again in Chelva and ahead of some serious competition too. Riza Gaulu Henrique was in second and Maya Wawzowska in third. In the men's race it was Giol Bertolini with the win for Team Focus but an unfortunate day for Neff's cross teammate Fabian Giga who punctured on the first lap and was left with a difficult battle to compete for top honours. These results are obviously very interesting considering the timing, a great teaser for next week's opening World Cup race in Stellenbosch, South Africa, where all the top riders will be hoping to kick off their season with a big win. Neff's return so early from a nasty injury is great news for cross country fans for sure. It makes me wonder if she is ready to shock her rivals with a world champions performance in South Africa. The technical track will certainly suit her riding talents. What about the men's race there? Last year was a perfect whitewash for Nino Scherter throughout the World Cup. However, only recently he was pipped to the post by his own teammate, Matthias Sternemann, racing in the South Africa Cup in none other than Stellenbosch. Could Nino's perfect run be about to come to a close? I kind of hope not. But we shall see this weekend. Exciting times ahead. What a week of racing it's been. But what about you out there? Have you been racing and winning medals, getting podiums? Send us your podium shots if you have, and you could be seeing your moment on the rostrum featured here next week. And what about your mates races, the unsanctioned events you've been organizing out there? We'd love to give your events some exposure. So send us some videos and a report of what went down and we will tell everyone all about it. Thank you for watching this very first GMBN race news. I've really enjoyed it. I'd love to know what you think about the show in the comments section down below. Hey, stick with us and click the subscribe button right here to get more from GMBN. And if you want some videos right now, then click over there for Blake Sampson's Darkfest documentary and click over here to see more about our presenter, Neil Donahue. What a great guy he is. Uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you on the race news next week.